Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is DJ Reminis, aka Amon Panisser. I'm going to teach you today how to warp a track in Ableton. Um, this is a really important step in Ableton. This will give you the capability of doing some really tight remixes, mixtapes, whatever it may be if you're into sampling or making music for loops. That way your sample, loop, song, whatever it is will stay in the timing of the song in the grid, tight locked with the tempo. So how we do this is really simple. So I've just imported this track right here. It's an old school Pradesi track. And I'm going to um, warp this so it fits to the contour of the grid. Now, by default, the BPM, global BPM is 120 BPM with um, Ableton. Now, I don't know what the BPM of this song is, but I know it's not 120. But we'll figure out how we, how, how we can get it to the right BPM. So the first thing we're going to do is double click on it and it shows up on the bottom here. Now, I've turned warp off globally just because I like to warp my own music. Um, uh, it's an anal thing. I'm not a big automatic fan, but to turn warp on and off globally, it's in your uh, preferences right under record warp launch. So I've turned off auto warp long samples. Okay. So now we click the warp button, comes up with um, choose no reverb priest or warp markers. Yes, to, uh, I'll just click no for now. So I don't know where I got that warp marker from, but it's probably dead on. But let's just say, actually, let's just have a listen to this first. So, so you'll notice that this song's got a bit of an intro. Which is fine. I mean, whatever it is, what it is. But the way I warp my stuff is I look for a solid downbeat, roughly, you know, in the beginning of the song that I can I can warp, set a warp marker and then warp from there. So if we listen somewhere where the meets of the music starts. So. Okay, so right there. Actually, there's already a marker there. I, so perfect, right here. So there's a marker right here, kind of where the first downbeat started. So let's play that again. Yep, perfect. Now, in case there wasn't one, to add a wall mark in the spot you want, just come in here, zoom in, double click, adds a marker. To remove it, double click on the marker and it goes away. Or you could right click and go delete. Okay, so there's one of the markers. So I'm going to come in here. You know, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to go and set one one here on that marker that we created. Now, what that does is it's going to start the song every time you play it from that point. So, for example, OK, just for now, just so we can figure out the warp stuff. I mean, you can put the marker once it's warped and in, in, in tempo, you can put it anywhere you want. OK, again, this is not 120 BPM. Let's kind of figure out what it is. So the way I warp, the way I warp. My music or songs is I'll put one in the beginning somewhere and one near the end. So let's look for another sort of point where we can put a marker. Okay, so somewhere in here is where the beat drops. Let's see. Okay, okay, so this one right here. So I'm going to put a marker there and move that to the nearest whole beat. Now, this is where you got to kind of guess. So do we go... This way or do we go that way? Honestly, it's trial and error. So, you know, let's just, let's go this way just to see. So as you can see, it started to slow down. Now it's at 120 BPM, right? Um, looking better. So let's find, um, let's try to warp the rest of the song. Oh, sorry. I missed one important step. Let's delete that one for a second. So you want to also, after you um, right click and go set one one here, what you want to do is start the warping from that point forward. So what you do is you go warp from here straight. Now what that does, it puts markers where it thinks based on um, it's a logarithm where the marker should be. Now if you notice, look, now it's at 93.75. And I think that's probably right around where the um, original tempo is. So now if I play it from this point, see it's sped up with the tempo, right? So you're kind of in the right direction. You know it's not 120. You know it's going to sound pretty chipmunkish. Um, another note, too, that I want you to uh, you know understand, this is completely up to you. There's different ways or options for warping. I always pick Complex Pro just because it doesn't give me that chipmunk effect where I'm speeding up or slowing down. 
it changes the tonal artifacts. Okay. Now, for example, with complex or so let's just let's just assume it's 94. So I'm gonna change this to 94 based on that number right here. And if we play it now, it sounds normal again, yes? Now, because I'm in complex pro mode, and if I play this and speed it up, you'll hear that it does speed up, but the tonal artifacts of the song do not really change. I'll show you what I mean. You hear that? It still sounded pretty much the same, just sped up. Now, if you want like vinyl, where when you pitch it, it changes the tonal artifacts, you just basically go to beats. So now if I play this, you hear it? So that's completely up to you. Like I said, I leave everything in Complex Pro just because I like to speed stuff up and keep, keep and, and keep the original tonal artifacts. Okay, so now back to the warping. So we got one warp point there. Now, let, now let's go back and find one near the end. Okay, so let's listen to this again. Okay, so roughly here. Right here. So now I'm going to basically double click in here. Move that to 89. Okay, now... I've put two in just for now. How do we know we're in the right direction? Well, you know what? Ableton's got a click. This one right here, you click on that. And now when it plays from this point, because remember that's where we did our starting point, the click will be with it so you can tell if you're on time or not. Okay, so let me hit play here. So far, so good. Let's go in the middle somewhere here. Um, not bad. It kind of drifts in and out. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm anal. I, got, I like it perfect. So I'm going to go in here now and show you how I warp things. So predominantly with uh, Punjabi music, um, usually there's a intro, there's the verse, there's a hook. And after the hook, there's typically some music or instrumental. Now, the way I mix stuff when I DJ with Punjabi music, I'll start the next song that I'm going to mix pretty much in the music part of the previous song. So with Ableton, I use my markers as visual indicators. So I know where I'm going to mix the next song. And I'll show you what I mean here. So let's just play this a little bit. So clearly, that's a music break right there. So let's find the beginning of that break. Okay, so right there on 13. So I'm going to go in here and kind of tighten this up. See, Ableton thinks that that's where the the downbeat is or that's where it should be. Eh, you know, most most of the time it's not too bad, but I'm I'm and I can tell cuz I've been doing this a long time that I'm going to take it from this point and move that over. So that is the beginning of the first music piece. Now again, when I'm DJing and I have see this in front of me cuz I DJ in Ableton, I know that I'm going to blend the next song at this point maybe. But, you know, like all Punjabi music, there's music breaks throughout the song. So let's find the next one. So I'm going to go somewhere in here. There's the hook. Okay, so right here is another one. So let's take it somewhere here. Move that over. Let's go. Oh, look got lucky there. Found another one. Okay, now that one starts over here, and there's probably one more. There we go. Ah, uh, somewhere here. And then what I like to do, well, I've already done it near the end. That's for the end piece, but. I'll always do the last hook as well. You know, just in case there's those odd few people where, you know, Sara Gana La, we want to hear the little thing. So now this track is warped. It's done pretty much in tempo. So these are the indicators where I'm going to blend my next song is. And now you're probably thinking, okay, well, what about the beginning? Now, that's totally up to you. I mean, I I will probably most likely play the song somewhere here. So because this is warped and it takes in factor the stuff behind this, you should be able to just take this, say, four bars back 
hit play and it should be within time. Most of the time, but let's see. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, it's not bad. I mean, I'll probably go in here and tune it up a bit. You know, move that over there. Then go back. Maybe I like eight bar intro. So let's go back another four and have a listen. Kind of shaky. So let's go in here and fine tune that. Oh, yeah. So the bass kind of starts roughly here. Move that back. And now... And there you have it. Track is warped. Now you can start, stop this song anywhere you want. I mean, I've picked this point. I'll probably set my 1-1 one, one here. And now I know that there's an 8-bar intro. The beginning comes in here. There's all the music breaks. And chances are this is the hook. So track is done. It's warped. You're ready to go. Now it's, a, you know, it's endless. You can go in here and start from anywhere. You can, you know, uh, for example, if you're going to mix this with another track, uh, say, for example, it's, you know, right now it's 94 BPM. How do I know it says 93.89? That's 94. Just round it up to the nearest whole number. So when we hit play somewhere in here, you know, you can speed it up. You can slow it down. Turn that off for you guys. Totally endless. And the best part is it's going to stay in sync on the grid locked. That's the beauty of Ableton. Warping is a key, key, key factor. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I got more videos coming out. Leave some comments below. You can always get a hold of me if you got any questions or concerns. I'm DJ Reminis signing out. See you soon.